Hello, everyone. Welcome hey. to another episode of Montgomery's Meaningful, Meaningful Monday. Monday. Well, hey, welcome, everyone. We want to uh, thank everyone for liking, comment, commenting, subscribing to uh, our videos and just, you know, sharing the messages that we've been uh, posting. You can follow us on here on uh, YouTube. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook and also TikTok. Um, but enough about that. Let's just jump into today's topic. Yep. We're going to be talking about cultivating g your gifts or another way we put it cultivating the new so the new things that you're giving it's a perfect time to talk about that because we just had christmas a bunch of us were giving and receiving gifts and so i just want to point out some uh gifts that have been given to us through the father um so the greatest gift of all of course is salvation um we have second corinthians 5 17 Ephesians 4 24 and Colossians 3 10 but I'm just going to read 2 Corinthians 5 17 and it says therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new so that is a new thing a new gift um that although yes you know we all have that oh I got saved when I was this 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 age or it happened on this day it's a gift that we have to cultivate a lamentations 3 22 to 23 talks about his mercies the lord mercies being made new every morning and so every day that you wake up there is new mercy you know there there is new grace there is new opportunity for you to repent right there is new opportunity for you to go into his presence all of this is just tying into something isaiah 43 19 he talks about he's doing a new thing um do you not perceive of it i i just wanted to highlight although we received so, different types of gifts um and, and during the christmas season and every year there are different things that we want it's a beautiful thing that throughout the year throughout your lifespan there are continuous gifts that are given to you by the father we see the new mercies, you know, his saving grace, right? His saving grace is also something that is, that is like what they say, you know, we, we could literally drown in his grace, correct? And so now we're going to get into, y'all probably are wondering, okay, well, how can I cultivate these gifts? How can I cultivate the gifts that are given to me? And we have three P's. How to cultivate your gift. And so the first thing you could do is you can cultivate it through prayer. And prayer, what is prayer? It's communication with God. And I have a scripture, Matthew 6, verse 5 through 8. And I'm just read it real quick on what cultivating your, your gift is. It's basically talking about uh, when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. And that, that just talks about how, you know, you don't want to be... Uh, a hypocrite when you when you when you pray you, you don't want to um, just pray just any old type of prayers make make sure that you're praying with with a sincere heart um, the second P is presence and that is found in Acts 16 verse 25 through 28 so in Acts 16 Paul and Silas they were in prison and they were cultivating their their gift of getting to the Lord's presence through praise and worship and so in this, they access the Lord's presence by having praise and worship. One thing about the Lord is that there is no boundary in which where you can have praise and worship. It doesn't matter if you're in a prison. It doesn't matter if you're in your home. It doesn't matter if you're on the road. Wherever you, you have access to the Lord and through, you have access to his presence uh, by, by having praise and worship wherever you are. And the last P is posture. Psalms 27 verse 4 speaks of how to posture your heart when you're getting into the presence of the Lord. And when you look at that verse, one thing that you know I, I want to point out is that of all the things that we ask for, we can ask for cars, we can ask for uh, jobs, money, status, fame, uh, relationships, all these things. When will we ever get into a position where in our hearts to just be in a posture of gratitude, not thanking the, the Lord for what he's done, but just thanking the Lord for who he is. And we just want nothing from God but his presence alone. That's when you have 
uh, your heart in the right posture. So we have the three P's that you can use to help cultivate your relationship. You have prayer, you have presence, and you have posture. Yep, those are the three P's. All I wanted to say was one thing that I like that my husband had wrote, wrote down was having a posture of gratitude. And the reason I just wanted to point that out with the last P was because when you have a grateful heart, when you are truly grateful for what the Lord has done, you um, it helps you to be humble. It helps you to remain in a place of humility. And when you when you ha when you're in that type of status, um, you are able to cultivate. You are able to cultivate what you have because you know that it wasn't you that got it. It was Him that gave it. You know, it wasn't oh because of this or because of that. It's just because God is that good that He gave that gift. And so I'm able to cultivate it better or able to steward it better because I have a heart of gratitude. I'm able to say not it's because of my works or because of what I want to do, but no, it's because of the goodness of my Father. It's because He's faithful. You know, that's I just I really just want to point that out. Just having a grateful heart is one of the the biggest things. And that's why I'm going to just say it. That's why I feel like the Bible says that um, David was a man after God's own heart. You know, if you look at the Psalms, they're full of thanksgiving. They're full of him just being grateful. Him knowing where to go when he's, you know, in a cave. Or yeah, um, earlier when my husband was talking about presence, I even thought about when Jonah was in the belly of that whale. Mm -hmm. You know, there are no boundaries to his presence. David and um, Lion's name. David and Lions, no matter where you find yourself in the fire, right? No matter where you find yourself, you can, he's there with you. Um, and so that is everything. We're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode, wrap up this segment. And um, our prayer is that, you know, you all will be blessed, that you all will be encouraged in Jesus name. See you. Peace.